So the next very interesting operation that we will learn about is called the determinant of a matrix, right? So uh, to be more precise, it is the determinant of a square matrix, right? So we'll try to understand the concept of determinants, its properties, both from a visual standpoint or a geometric standpoint and a numerical standpoint, right? So determinant of A is often written as debt of A. Given a square matrix of size n by n, debt of A is what is written typically as. Some, in some books, you might also encounter this notation where it, it is just written as debt A or more popularly, it is often written with a ver two vertical bars around it, right? So all these three are three different ways of representing the same concept. And what a determinant results in is determinant results in a single number. Determinant returns a single number which which captures a very, very important property of the matrix A that I'll talk about, right? So let, let's take a simple 2 cross 2 example first. Try to understand everything from a 2 cross 2 example. And whatever learnings we have from 2 cross 2 are very simple to translate into 3 cross 3 or 4 cross 4 matrices, right? So let's assume A is a 2 cross 2 matrix, right? Let's assume A is a 2 cross 2 matrix like this. Let's say A, B, C, D, right? This is a 2 cross 2 matrix, right? Then the debt of A can be written as this. And debt of A, numerically speaking, is written as, look at this, A, D. I take this, I multiply by this, A, D minus B, C. Okay. So this is what the determinant of a 2 cross 2 matrix is, numerically speaking. Okay. Very simple concept. But now let's look at it geometrically because that's a very key, because understanding determinants from a geometric standpoint gives you a lot of appreciation on how this single number from a given matrix is obtained. Now, since we have a square matrix, look at this. this since this is a 2 cross 2 matrix, I can imagine this as a linear transformation. I can imagine A to be representing a linear transformation. Right? If I'm imagining this to be representing a linear transformation, I can think of this as the place where I had lands after the transformation. I can think of this as the location where J hat lands after the transformation, right? So if you, if you think about it geometrically, if this is my coordinate system, right? This is my X axis and this is my Y axis. Initially, at the very beginning, my I hat is here, right? My J hat is here initially. Both of them are of unit length. But at the end of the transformation that is represented or the linear transformation that is represented by matrix A, Let's assume, let's assume A is here. Okay, let's assume this I hat, let's assume this I hat got transformed to I hat 1 and this J hat got transformed because of the linear transformation represented by matrix A. Let's assume J hat got translated to or tra J hat became J hat 1 after this transformation, right? So in such a case, let's assume this is my J hat 1 and let's assume this is my I hat 1. Okay, so post transformation, post transformation, let's assume I hat went here and J hat went here. Now, what does this numerically mean? Right, using some simple algebra, using some simple algebra. Okay, so, so using some simple algebra, you can actually show, you can actually show that this, this value, that this value is same as the area, this value you can show to be the to be or the absolute value of this value. So if I take AD minus BC, if I take the absolute value of this, okay, if I ignore the negative sign, if, if this becomes a negative number, I'll explain you what is the geometric interpretation if this is a negative number a little later. But let's assume if I take the absolute value of this, okay, this is a number, right? I'm taking the absolute value here. So just not to get confused with determinants, let me write it as ABS. Okay, if I take the absolute value of this, what I get now is nothing but the square of this parallelogram. Okay, what I get now is the area, not the square. It's the area of this parallelogram. So this is a parallelogram, right? Because this is parallel to this and this is parallel to this. So this is the area of the parallelogram. Parallelogram, yes. So it is the area of this parallelogram that I'll obtain. So what a determinant represents, if you think about it from a 2 cross 2 matrix perspective is, if it, it represents the area that is obtained 
of the path it's it represents the area of the parallelogram that is obtained from the transformed i hat and j hat okay and this transformation is represented by this matrix a that's what it means again we can see a very simple proof for this uh, using some simple geometry again i'm taking this from uh, three uh, three blue one brown right so let's assume this is where my okay look, let's look at this right if this is my i1 hat okay and if this is my j1 hat okay the area of this parallelogram now look at this the area of this whole parallelogram okay using some simple some simple algebra and some simple hacking around i can show is equal to ad minus bc so th this proof is very simple i'm not going to go into the depth of it because it is just simple right angle triangles and squares look at this look at the look at the area of this whole square the area of this whole square is ab or a plus b look at this the area of this whole square or sorry the area of this whole uh, rectangle not the square is a plus b look at this a plus b right this is the area of this uh, square or so this rectangle is a plus b multiplied by c plus d right this is the area of this whole rectangle from that rectangle from this rectangle i'll, I'll have to remove the area of this 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 and the area of this to obtain the area of this parallelogram right that's what i have to do right and if you notice i have i have a rectangle here whose area is bc that's why you have bc i again have one more rectangle whose area is bc so i have 2 bc i have a right angle triangle here whose area is ac by 2 here i have a right angle triangle whose area is ac by 2 so if i sum both of them i will get ac because i have to subtract i get minus ac similarly i have bd by 2 and bd by 2 if i sum both of them up i'll get bd so i'm removing that so if if you just perform simple algebraic operations like this inspired by the simple geometry of right angle triangles and rectangles okay the final area of the parallelogram that you'll obtain is ad minus bc okay very simple example nothing very fancy out here okay so so that's what it means right so there is an other way there is an other simpler way to interpret this okay so what did we say we said that the determinant of a matrix a is the area of the parallelogram okay again there, there might be a sign associated with it i'll discuss about it a little later at least the absolute value of the determinant right is the area of the parallelogram that you obtain based on the i1 hat and j1 hat which are linear transformations represented by matrix a itself on vectors i hat and j hat which are the unit basis vectors in the original space okay very simple this is one way of thinking about it the other way of think so absolute value of ad minus bc is the area of the parallelogram okay the short form to write parallelogram is this two parallel lines and gm okay this means parallelogram okay this is a short hand way of writing it now there is an other way to think about it instead of just thinking about it from i hat and j hat perspective there is an alternative way of thinking about it let me show you that way also so imagine imagine i have so imagine in my original space right in my original space of i hat and j hat imagine i have some some blob okay i have some shape here in the original space okay now a is a linear transformation let's not forget that a is a linear transformation okay a is a linear transformation so after performing the linear transformation on the whole space how much does this area change okay that is what is represented by your determinant let me just play this snippet now look at this look at this if you notice if you notice the original area was here the final area of the same blob after applying the linear transformation this is the final area of the blob so if you take the ratio of the final area by the original area what you get is the determinant of matrix a again this transformation from this blob to this blob happened through a linear transformation as represented by matrix a right i hope i hope this is clear okay so let's let's continue okay okay this is the final transformation that has happened now the other way to think about determinant of a is basically determinant of a right you can think of determinant of a as the scale as the scale by which by which any area any area transforms or changes due to due to the linear transformation 
due to the linear transformation due to the linear transformation represented by represented by matrix a okay this is very important okay we just understood that it is a scale by which any area changes due to the linear transformation as represented by matrix a okay that's what is the determinant of a intuitively or geometrically speaking okay we have also shown in 2d again in 2d we've shown that it's the same concept now let's take let's understand a few cases now there are a few very interesting cases okay the first case we'll think of is let's take a matrix like this this matrix is 4 2 2 1 okay this is my matrix this is the 2 cross 2 linear transformation this is where i hat lands okay this is where i hat lands which is equal to let's say i1 hat this is where j hat lands okay this is where j hat lands now if you draw this diagrammatically if you draw this diagrammatically if this is your x axis and this is your y axis your i and j vectors if you see this is 4 2 and this is 2 1 if you actually plot them if you actually plot them this is where your i1 hat will be and your j1 hat your j1 hat your j1 hat is also going to be on the same on the same line if you notice this these two vectors your i1 hat is nothing but 2 times j1 hat which means they both are linearly dependent you recall this concept of linear dependence between two vectors right so your i1 hat is represented as some scalar multiplied by another vector and hence i1 hat and j1 hat are linearly dependent on one another okay now what happens to the determinant of this if you compute it numerically it is 4 into 1 minus 2 into 2 okay the determinant is 0 if you compute it numerically what about what about geometrically okay if you look at this your i1 hat was here your j1 hat was here sorry your i hat your i hat was initially here your j hat was initially here now finally after transformation your i1 hat is here your j1 hat is here what is the area of the parallelogram that is created by these two vectors there is no parallelogram because both these points are on the same line right because both these points are on the same line both these points are on this both these points are on the same line there is no parallelogram that is built or in other words the area of the parallelogram the area of the parallelogram built after this transformation is equal to zero which is what we also obtain numerically see it's very important to connect the numerical understanding with the geometric intuition okay that's where that's where the mathematics becomes much more elegant and beautiful okay it's very easy to get the numerical stuff because it's just simple algebra right 4 into 1 simple multiplication minus 2 into 2 right the simple algebra is very simple now we are connecting this concept of simple numbers simple numerical concepts to a geometric representation okay and this connection is a super important part okay now let's take an another example right now let's take an another example imagine my matrix a looks like this 1 2 3 4 okay now what is the determinant of it let's compute it numerically what is the determinant of a 1 into 4 minus 2 into 3 now this has become negative number look at this now this is a negative number what does a negative number mean so this 2 this 2 basically represents the area this 2 represents the area of the parallelogram right that is that is represented by i1 hat and j1 hat that part we have understood but what does this negative part now mean intuitively or geometrically okay so what it means is this okay let me show it to you diagrammatically okay i think that's a better way of understanding this okay it's hard to draw this diagram so i'll i'll use some references from three blue one brown okay so this is my i hat and this is my j hat initially right so once my i hat and j hat are like this okay let me just okay so this is my i hat and this is my j hat if you notice your j hat is to the left of i hat here okay your j hat look at the orientation of this okay look at the orientation your j hat is on the left side of i hat okay now let's see now after the transformation look at this after the transformation what has happened this is your i1 hat okay this is your i1 hat which in this in this video is represented as li okay or the linear transformation of i hat okay that's what it is represented as now your j hat so your j hat became lj hat or in other words in the terminology that we are using this became j1 hat okay so this video writes it as lj to represent that it's a linear transformation on j 
So if you notice, the orientation itself changed. Initially, we had, initially we had J hat like this, right? We had I hat like this. J hat was on the left side. J hat was on the left side of I hat. Now, after the linear transformation, as represented by this matrix, as represented by this matrix, right? Your I hat, look at this, your I hat. Now, the, the orientation has changed, right? Initially, J hat was on the left side of I hat. Now, I hat is on the left side of J hat. Look at this. Everything got flipped around now. Okay, the orientation got flipped around or inverted. Look at this. I hat is on the left side of J hat. Now, sorry, J hat is on the left side of I hat. Now, J hat is on the right side. Look at this. J hat or the transformed value of J hat or J1 hat or LJ hat is on the right side now instead of it being on the left side. So, the, so the orientation, right, or, or the orientation got flipped. So, so what happened here was the orientation, the orientation of the space got flipped or inverted. The orientation got flipped or inverted. And hence, you have this negative sign here. Okay. So, whenever you get this negative sign in a determinant, what it means is that this linear transformation is changing your, is changing the orientation of your i hat and j hat. If initially i hat and j hat are like this, eventually, eventually you will have a situation. See, because this is, here j hat is on the left side of i hat. And after the transformation, after the linear transformation as represented by A, you will have a situation where your i1 hat, right, your i1 hat is going to be on the right side. So, your, or, or in other words, your J1 hat is, on, is going to be on the right side of your I hat or I1 hat. Okay, I hope this is clear because there is this inversion, this negative sign literally represents that the orientation got flipped or inverted. Okay, I hope now you have a better appreciation of the whole idea of what a determinant means in 2D. Okay, same thing happens even in 3D. The same concept gets translated even to 3D. Okay, nothing changes. In the case of a 3D, right, your, your matrix A is going to be a 3 cross 3 matrix that represents a linear transformation, that represents a linear transformation, that represents a linear transformation. Again, I'm writing some short form here. It represents a linear transformation in 3D, but in 3D, there is no concept of an area. It is going to be the concept of a volume. It's going to be the volume of the parallelogram in 3D or higher dimensional spaces is called as parallelo parallel parallelopiped okay it's 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 a tongue twister it's called as a parallelopiped okay i can show a very simple example of that on the wikipedia article okay if you just go to the wikipedia article which is fabulous look at this the wikipedia article also shows this transformation in 2d look at this the wikipedia article shows very clearly in 3d right the wikipedia article shows very nicely in 3d what happens in a 3d case it is a volume of the parallel pipe head, okay, that you obtain by taking, look at this, because you are I, because you have three basis vectors, right? You have I, J, and K. Now, I will get transformed to I1 hat, J will get transformed to J1 hat, and K would get transformed to K1 hat, right? Now, all three of them, since they're getting transformed to a different vector, there is going to be a volume that is created by those transformed vectors. That volume is what is going to be represented by the absolute value of the determinant that you get. Okay. Now, let's look at it from a numerical standpoint. Suppose if I have, if my matrix A, if my matrix A is like this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. If I want to compute, if I want to compute the determinant of this, how do I do it? There is a way to write it. I'll show you two simple ways of doing it. The first one is, take this first element A, Okay, multiply it with the determinant of this. See, because I've taken A, I'm ignoring A's row and A's column. So just ignore the row in which A is there, ignore the row in which, in, ignore the column in which A is there. You're left with this. So compute the determinant of this, of this matrix. Okay, compute the determinant of this matrix. Okay, minus. Okay, now look at this. A is in first row, first column. And if you sum up both of them, 1 plus 1 is 2. That's why you have a positive sign here. Now, B is in first row, second column. If you sum up 1 plus 2, it's an odd number. Since it's an odd number, you have minus 1. Minus 1 multiplied by B. 
So now ignore the B's row. Now now ignore the B's row and the B's column. So you are you are going to be left with B F. Look at this, B F G I, right? If you ignore the B's row, so B's column and B's row, right? You are going to be left with D F and G I. Okay. Next, let's take C. C is in first row and third column. If you sum one plus three, you get four, which is an even number. So you'll have plus one multiplied by C. Now, if you ignore C's column and C's row, you're left. You're going to be left with D E G H. And now you already know how to compute the determinant of a two cross two matrix. Okay. So what have, what have we done? We have taken the determinant of a three cross three matrix and we have represented it as determinant of two cross two matrices. Which, if you're a computer science student, you know that this is what is called as recursion in computer science, right? Again, that's perfectly okay if you don't know what recursion is. Anyway, you learn that in programming if you're a computer science student. Okay, so this is simple. So now an important term here is these determinants, these three determinants here, these three determinants here. Okay, these are called the minors. These are called the minors of my matrix A. Okay, just defining a term here. These are called the minors of of your of your matrix A. Okay, so now if you simplify all of this, you'll get some term. Okay, so that that's going to be still time taking. There is a shorter form. There is a shortcut to all of this, which is often referred to as uh, uh, Saru's rule. Okay, there is I mean because writing it like this is going to be tedious, and compute manually doing it is going to be tedious. There is a there is a simpler way to remember the result of this. Okay, the way it is is you write A B C D E F G H I again. Repeat. Re see, you've written three columns now, right? Repeat the first column again. A D G. Repeat the second column again. B E H. This is what you have. Now, what Saru's rule says is multiply all three of them. A E H plus multiply all three of them okay b f g then multiply all three of them c d h sorry c d h okay you've multiplied all these three terms now you start subtracting this okay now you start so this is here okay uh one second so this is here yeah so you start subtracting let me change the color here okay b e g b e g okay then you sub then you perform c f h minus c f h minus did i write it correctly i hope i wrote it correctly okay so this is here one second so a b c sorry 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 i messed it up i should write it carefully i think i messed it up okay let me write it carefully on a new page okay the the because if if i if i if i don't draw these lines carefully i've messed it up completely Okay, so let's actually. Okay, let's see it actually on Wikipedia. Actually, this is available on Wikipedia. Why again redraw it? Redraw the whole thing. Okay, so look at this is what Saru's rule says. Okay, okay. So let me show it to you here itself because it's much more cleanly written here. So look at this. I have A B C D E F G H I. Let's say A is A one one, B is A one two, C is A one three, and so on and so forth. So you write. So you add A one one, A two two, A three three, right? So which means you add these three. So you multiply these three, wherein you get A E I, right? Then you multiply B F. What will be there next? So you you multiply these three terms, multiply these three terms, multiply these three terms. Okay, those three terms addition will be present first. Then, then okay, then you come the backwards way. Okay, I think I messed this up. So this is where I messed it up because there is no third element here. Okay, then you start coming. It's easier to come backwards. Okay, take this. Okay, minus the product of these three, minus the product of these three, minus the product of these three. You can't actually do this because there is no term here left. Okay, this is what is called the Saru's rule of doing it. Okay, look at this. You have three, you have three product terms which are added and three product terms that are subtracted. Okay, very simple concept. So let's actually write it down. I I want to do it once. So you have A B C D E F. I have to write it in columns carefully. G H I Right. Then again, I have A D G B E H. Okay. So what do we do now? So we now go and A E I. Yes. B F G. Yes. C D H. Yes. These three terms are there. 
now i can't do this because there is no third term here minus minus okay let me change the color here a little minus c e g right minus c e g yes okay that's true then i have b d i and a f h minus this minus this so when you go in this way you add them when you go in this way you subtract them you have to be slightly careful that you are not messing up the columns that's what is sarus rule very simple rule nothing very fancy here okay so now let's learn of some simple properties let's learn of si some simple properties of determinants okay very simple properties the first one is the determinant of an identity matrix we have seen what an identity matrix is right diagonal elements are one rest everything is zero so this is basically diagonal elements are one rest everything is zero that's what a identity matrix is the determinant of identity matrix is one you can verify this numerically okay you can also think about it geometrically what does an identity matrix do it's not changing the space at all look at this an identity matrix if you take any vector if you take any vector multiply it by identity matrix you'll get the vector itself which means the space itself is not changing when the space itself is not changing the area the areas in that new space also don't change and hence see this is this is one way you can connect the numerical aspects and the geometric aspects okay because this is this is an identity matrix which means there is no change of the space itself the area also remains the same and hence its determinant equals to 1 similarly determinant of a transpose determinant of a transpose is same as determinant of a okay you can also prove this numerically by the way we learn of a concept so we learn of a concept called inverse little later there is also a very nice formula so there is a concept called inverse of a matrix that we we'll learn in the next couple of videos i just want to write the statement here we we'll learn what inverse is later but this is an important property right the determinant of a inverse so by the way a inverse is written like this the determinant of a inverse is nothing but determinant of a or 1 by determinant of a this is one way you can write it or this is also written as determinant of a power minus 1 because this is a number right determinant of a is a number so number power minus 1 is nothing but 1 by the number okay so again we have not yet covered inverses or inverse of a matrix it's a very simple concept we'll learn about it a little later okay similarly the determinant of product of two matrices is the is is basically the product of determinants of the matrices okay so this is a very interesting and important property okay similarly if you have a scalar a and if you have a matrix sorry if you have a scalar c and a matrix a the determinant of c into a is this is a very interesting one you have the determinant of a and remember that a is an n cross n matrix if a is an n cross n matrix this determinant will be c power n again you can manually verify this you can actually test this out yourself okay so you can actually numerically verify this you can actually numerically verify this right you can also you can also think about it intuitively or geometrically see here what am i doing here c into matrix a basically means whatever is the transformation represented by a i'm scaling the transformation by c in each axis in each axis that scaling will be transformed by c now now look at this because a is an n cross n or uh, a, a is an n cross n matrix or a is an n cross n linear transformation the space in which i am there is an n cross is a is an n dimensional space right which means the volume of the parallel pipette in this n dimensional space will get changed by c power n okay because there are n dimensions here right because look at this now a is a linear transformation a is a linear transformation in n dimensional space right which means each of the n dimensions that i have okay each of the n basis vectors that i have okay in three dimensions i might have i hat j hat and k hat right each of them would get stretched by by an amount of c whatever is the linear transformation it would get stretched by an amount of c which means the whole volume of the parallel pipette in the high dimensional space or in the three dimensional space or n dimensional space is going to be changed by c power n okay so this is an important property there is an other very interesting property so we have learned about triangular matrices right we have learned about triangular matrices right so if you have a triangular matrix whether it's an upper triangular or lower triangular matrix whether it's upper or lower triangular matrix 
whether it's upper or lower triangular matrix the determinant of this lower determinant of this triangular matrix i'm just writing at to represent that it's a triangular matrix remember that i'm not putting t at the top because that would become transpose okay if a is a triangular matrix the determinant of a is nothing but it is a product of all the diagonal elements it is a product of the diagonal elements it is a product of the diagonal elements or in other words it is a it is nothing but it is a product of a11 with a22 with a33 so on so forth up to ann okay remember that your triangular matrix is a square matrix here in this case right so your the the determinant of the triangular matrix is the product of the diagonal elements or the product of a11 a22 a33 so on so forth up to ann okay these are some of the properties that we have covered there are some other properties that we have not covered here primarily because they require us to understand other additional concepts okay but the best way but the best way for you is to actually go to wikipedia look at this all the properties of a determinant are clearly written with lots of nice details on wikipedia itself okay wikipedia is probably the best source to get everything at one place to the best of my knowledge okay sounds good so since we have learned what determinant is let's learn other concepts uh, in a little while